Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So excited for today's video. I am going to be doing a video all about my luxury eyeshadow palette. So if you would like to see what we have in store for you, then just keep watching. of course was inspired by the tag that both Samantha March and Allie Glines collaborated on. If you hadn't seen those videos, I'm going to link them down below, but basically I don't know how you haven't because that tag is spreading like wildfire. So what they did was they curated questions about eyeshadow palettes and you had to pick the eyeshadow palette that fit in that category. And like I said, it's everywhere. Everybody and their mama has videos on those. I also did it. It was so fun. One of you guys commented you would like to see a luxury version of this and I thought it was such a fun idea for my luxury community and my luxury followers that I have. I created some of my own questions that pertain to luxury eyeshadow palettes. I of course used inspiration from the questions that already existed in the regular eyeshadow palette tag but this one really just focuses on my luxury eyeshadow palette collection. So if you have a handful of luxury eyeshadow palettes I would love for you to participate in this. Comment down below if you don't have a channel if you have one and you have a nice size luxury collection this is a good way to dig in. Like I said all credit goes to Ali and Sam for inspiring this video and for me typing some of their questions. I just think this is a really fun play on this already fun tag that is going around. So the first question that I have is the palette with the most luxe packaging. Now for me when it comes to luxury eyeshadows it's all about the experience. That is part of what you're paying for. Everything should be special about the shadow from pulling it out of your drawer to applying it on the eyes and wearing it out. So for that I mean you guys aren't going to be very surprised but anything from Pat McGrath really especially her Mothership eyeshadow palettes this is the most luxe experience you're going to get in makeup. Now like I said any Mothership palette you have is going to give you that experience. I just like the Midnight Sun one because purple. First of all, you start off by unraveling this beautiful piece of artwork. Then you open it up and here lies your black lacquer palette. This palette is heavy, you guys. This is a luxe luxe palette with luxe luxe packaging. Just so expensive. You're paying for this packaging, absolutely. This is really expensive. I just opened this and this is not Midnight Sun. This is Divine Rose. Um, I gotta figure that out. Where is my Midnight Sun? Anyways, <laughs> doesn't matter. Same experience. You open it up and then you have your beautiful shades. Everything from pulling it out of the drawer to opening it up is super luxe. I absolutely think that Pat McGrath has the most luxe packaging in the game. Absolutely. Next question is least luxe packaging and that has to go to Dior, you guys. I almost picked Viseart, but those are actually very nice quality though. It may not be the prettiest. The thing with Dior is this is plastic. You get really, really cheap little applicators that can't do much. I mean, we do like doe foot applicators now, but still it's super cheap and then you just have this extra space. It's plastic. It doesn't feel very sturdy. It's boring. In my opinion, I just think that this is some of the least luxe packaging for what you're paying for. I would expect a lot more. They really need to update this packaging, you guys. It's not good. It would be different if this wasn't like plastic, you know? You could make this simple design very luxe but this is not it. This is super plastic -y. I don't know. Anyways, this is the least luxe packaging in my opinion, especially for what you're paying for. Next up is a luxe palette that is worth every penny. Again, this is no surprise to you guys if you are a regular on my channel, but for me, it of course is the Pat McGrath Labs Bronze Seduction Palette. Again, you're paying for that experience, which is worth it. And then hopefully this is actually bronze seduction. Yes, it is. So for me, this is worth it because I feel like I can create so many looks with this palette. I can create colorful looks, out of the box kind of looks, but I can also create really wearable looks. I just love every single look 
that I come out with when it comes to this palette. So for me, quality is on point, presentation is on point, packaging is on point, the color story is on point. Everything about this palette for me was worth every penny. And I mean, it depends on your taste. For a lot of people, Divine Rose is going to be that for you. But for me, as far as creativity, but also wearability and functionality, I personally find that Bronze Seduction was absolutely worth every penny. And I don't think you need every single Pat McGrath palette that comes out. But having one, that key palette that you just love the color story for, makes having one completely worth it. The next one is not worth the price. And for that, this is kind of a recent discovery for me. This is from Tom Ford, and this is the Badass Palette. Excuse my language. But no, this was not it. I paid like $80 for this. This has since gone on sale, but I don't even think this is worth half price. I just don't think it's a good quality palette. The colors, I Either don't show up or they're really patchy there's a bunch of fallout just everything about this palette I absolutely hated I feel like this palette sticks out like a sore thumb in the Tom Ford line it's just not good it's not worth the price not worth half the price this isn't going to give you the Tom Ford experience if you start off with this for the Tom Ford experience I'm very sorry because this just is not good it was not worth any of my pennies and not good quality so unfortunately I got a bag Tom Ford for that one <laughs> okay Next question is brand you own the most of. So what brand do I have the most palettes from? And um, <laughs> let's talk about it again, Tom Ford. So like I said, even though I had a bad experience with this palette, I have had a plenty of amazing experiences with his quads. I will admit some are definitely better than others. There are slight inconsistencies in the formula for the most part. He nails it, but if you are curious about his quads, I would definitely check out my Tom Ford rankings video and you'll see. I have around the ballpark of 20 Tom Ford quads and palettes, which is crazy. I got a lot of them for half off because they were discontinued at the cosmetic company store. I definitely have the most Tom Ford palettes. Like I have every Natasha Denona palette basically, every Pat McGrath palette, but it doesn't equate to the amount of Tom Ford that I have. So definitely have the most of Tom Ford and you can see that collection on my rankings video. And the next one is brand you own the least of. And for me, that is Givenchy. I never really talked about this palette, but I did not like it. I didn't think it was worth it. I don't think Givenchy is really known for their eyeshadows anyways. I just thought that this was going to be super luxe and it wasn't. It feels it's kind of cheapy. It looks kind of like Claire's makeup, you know? <laughs> so much wasted space. The color story I thought was really pretty and I thought it was going to be a really luxe experience, but honestly I don't find these shadows to really be anything special. Kind of a little chalky if I'm being honest, uh, but this is the only Givenchy eyeshadow palette that I own and it will probably continue uh, to be that way after my experience with this, but that's the brand I own the least of. I also only own like one Chanel palette, but I plan on growing that, and then one by Terry palette, but I decluttered that. So I really just only talked about Givenchy because it will remain kind of my least owned because I don't really see myself building on that collection. Okay, so the next one, your first Lux palette. And I'm not gonna lie, I kind of struggled with remembering what my first Lux palette was. I don't know if this was actually my first Lux palette, but it was definitely the first Lux palette that I owned that I was like, maybe the price tag is worth it. <laughs> And that is the Visi Art Theory Minx palette. I have talked about this a countless number of times on my channel because it is so good. I will never stop waxing poetic about this gorgeous palette. The mattes are buttery smooth and the shimmers are stunning. Always what I say to describe this is these are shimmers where you swatch it once and it runs all the way down the arm. There is so much pigment to them and I've had this for a really long time at this point. I got this when Visi Art first came out at Sephora and I swatched them and I was like, oh whoa. So yeah, this really kind of launched my love of luxury makeup and luxury eyeshadows because I realized the formulations for that price were kind of onto something. Visi Art Theory Minx palette 
one of the best introductions into luxury makeup if you ask me and I'm so happy that I got to experience luxury makeup with that palette. And then your newest Lux palette and I did just do a review on it but this is the Charlotte Tilbury Desert Haze Quad. This just came out with her new bronzer. You can totally check out the video but I really like this palette. I really love Charlotte Tilbury's mattes. I find them to be extremely buttery smooth, very pigmented, easy to blend. This is a medium to deep skin tone appropriate quad as well. There's a lot of depth in this palette, a lot of pigmentation. Definitely is going to stand out on skin tones. Yeah, I really liked this palette and this reminded me how much I love all matte eye looks. You guys know I'm a shimmer, glimmer, glitter kind of girl, but man, when you do an all matte look, there's something about it that's special. So I really have been enjoying this palette. It is very warm, but it's very pretty, very wearable colors. This is a really nice quad that Charlotte just came out with and I think it fits in with her line very well. It did fill a hole that was needed in her line in my opinion. Most expensive luxury palette. This one's going to be the same that was in my regular video, but I just thought I would repeat it again. So my most expensive luxury palette are these guys from Natasha Denona. They are 200 something dollars. I don't even wanna give you the exact number, but there's a purple blue one. This is the one that's in my hand right now. You'll see the green brown one in a second But both of these are like $240 and I mean you get a lot of shadows So maybe the value isn't the worst but just as far as out of pocket This is my most expensive palette and they are beautiful you guys I don't want to say they're super worth it and you need it I find them to be worth it and I think after you buy it You're not going to regret it, but they do go on sale So I would recommend picking this up during a sale just because it's a lot to pay at once for an eyeshadow palette, but it doesn't mean it's not worth it. It's just you can get a better deal, so you should get a better deal. Another category that I chose is luxury palette with the best value because I didn't want to do the least expensive one because luxury shadow palettes aren't cheap. And yeah, you can get them on sale, but I don't remember how much I paid. So I wanted to do the best value. And for that, I chose the Sunrise palette or the Love palette. Any Natasha Denona palettes that have this kind of packaging. If you ask me though, I like the Love palette the most. And this is the best value if you ask me because I really don't think she played around with the formulas too much. For the most part, there is consistent quality across the board with these. And what makes these an amazing value is that they're half the amount of product that she has in her regular full pan big palettes, but it's also exactly half the price. A lot of times with minis, they are definitely not half the price or they don't equal out to the ratio and the value kind of goes down. For this, she played no games, she cut no corners. She literally just took the amount, cut it in half, and then cut the price in half. And for that, I think that this makes it the best value. It doesn't leave a bad taste in my mouth that a lot of other brands do. So for me, these are the best value. She has great color stories. I'll show you the Sunrise palette as well. If you're more into warm tones, you may really enjoy this. But for me, I'm a girly girl. I love the pinks and purples. So Love Palette for me is one of the best value palettes in my collection. Next category, we have most most used and abused. So your most used and nastiest looking Lux palette. For me, that is the Vizier Grande Volume 1 palette. This I used in my makeup kit, but it also has definitely gotten some personal use as well. I definitely play around in this area the most, but I just feel like, one, I need to get a new one and just refresh this because this just looks gross. But yeah, I mean, I love this palette. And like I said, yes, I do use it for professional makeup for bridal makeup but honestly like I do find myself digging in this for day to day as well just because it has all the colors that you need for every day right here and you can even play around with colors there still are fun pops but just functionality it is here wearability it is here quality is fantastic and yeah this is my most used and abused Lux palette the next category is best mattes and for me the best mattes that you can find are in the Visi Art neutral mattes palette. This is a classic palette. It has been a around a very long time and there is something about these 12 panners that are so buttery smooth. They blend out beautifully. They blend out with ease. Everything about application with these colors from this palette create some of the best matte looks ever. So if you are looking for the best mattes in the business, I personally recommend picking out this palette to start. The mattes in here are also wonderful, but this is a little bit more buttery in here, and it's also a lot more affordable as well. I mean, it's not exactly affordable, but the best matte palette and the best matte colors that you can get are in this Viseart palette. 
in my opinion. The next category that I have is the best shimmers. And I didn't pick Pat McGrath for this. There is a palette that I feel very, very strongly about the shimmers and how much I love them. Now, the best glitter formula, I didn't make this category, but the best glitter formula are from Pat McGrath in her Mothership palettes. She has her beautiful special shades. You guys know what I'm talking about. I'll tell you in the next category. But yes, those are the best shimmery, glittery kind of formula. But if we're talking shimmer shimmers, there's something about the shimmers in the Natasha Denise green brown palette that I just love seriously they are so buttery smooth they're so shiny some are so glittery they're so metallic they're so thick with pigment and mm, mm. I just love the shimmery tones she chose for this palette. This green is incredible. The silver is one of the best silvers to ever exist. You have all of these beautiful green, taupey, brown kind of colors on this end. Everything about this palette is incredible. The shimmers really stand out here. So I think, obviously, if you want glitters, go for Pat McGrath. But if you're looking for a good palette that just contains really good shimmers to add dimension to your lid, this palette has it, it's the best. Next category is my most inspiring palette. So for me, it has to be, and I can't stop talking about Pat McGrath, I know, but you guys know she's my favorite eyeshadow brand. Yes, Morgan, we get it. You really like Pat McGrath. And this is the Mothership 3 Subversive. This is the most unique palette in her line, if you ask me. And it also is the most beautiful. So I already have a look on my channel with this palette. Every time I open this palette, I just feel like I can get a different look with this palette. So here are the special shades that I was talking about. This is my favorite eyeshadow formula of all time. I haven't come across a brand that really can replicate the dimension that these shadows give you. But just as a whole, the array of colors in here are very unique and they really spark a lot in my brain <laughs> like I look at this palette and I just think of all of the looks that I can do so if I'm ever in a funk I really enjoy going for this palette because it's not to the point where it's straight colorful and I'm uncomfortable with it I can still get wearable reasonable looks for myself but it takes me out of my comfort zone enough to where when I create the look I'm like oh I had to think about it but I really really like this. The last palette that I have to talk about is the palette that puts me most out of my comfort zone and for me that is the Visi Art Grande Pro Volume 3 and you'll see why in a second. I have not used this palette too much I won't lie but if you like rainbow looks this gives you a pro formula for any color that you need. I think this is not a bad palette. This is a very, very good palette. But I think what puts me off about this palette and why I feel so uncomfortable is because this palette is all pure color. There aren't too many shades to kind of neutralize a look, which I like color. I like a lot of colorful looks, but I always find a way to put a color in there to kind of neutralize it, whether it's a tan shade, a black shade, something to not make it as vibrant. And this is all vibrant vibes here. You see what I mean? It's a very, very a good palette and I think there is a market for this especially for professionals but as far as me my everyday wear I haven't grabbed for this palette that much because girl you got to be going for all types of color and I do actually need to pull this out and do a tutorial with this because this baby needs some love because I still love her very much the last question that I created this one doesn't have a palette to show but I just thought it would be a fun way to end this video and it is Lux brands I want to buy more from and for me that is Chanel. I only own one, the Lash Pages. And I don't know, I feel like their collections are just so limited that I always miss out or I just don't feel the need to purchase from. But I want to expand my Chanel collection in general. And that does include their shadow palettes. I don't really know too much about the formula or the brand itself. And I would absolutely love to get into Chanel more and their shadows and their formulation because uh, it's Chanel. <laughs> My bougiest dreams, I want to own a large Chanel collection. Can't afford the purse, but the makeup's a little bit more feasible. <laughs> so that is all I have, and those are all of the questions I kind of curated to transform this tag into a luxury tag. Thank you to Samantha and Allie for creating this tag and inspiring me to create this video. Again, 
it was super fun. That's another reason why I wanted to do this so that I could do it again like twice because it's such a fun video idea. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts down below. You guys know I love to talk shadows so this was really fun. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already I hope you take the time to do so and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys have a good one.